All right, since it's uh, my topic of the conversation, I just want to say thank you for joining me and welcome. Uh, one of the biggest things about Trump's tweeting is the fact that he really controls the media with his tweets. And for a very long time, me and the people who I considered my liberal friends, because I considered myself a liberal for a very long time, thought the mainstream media was essentially propaganda machine. It was owned by, owned by a small group of people who wanted to to basically control what people think. And every time some every time Trump tweets something, it gets mass attention and the media covers it. And there has been no more clear time recently than when he had the Kafefe tweet, where uh, people are speculating as to exactly what it was, but basically Trump sent out a tweet where it cut off early and there was a word Kafefe, which could have been a typo. It could have been on purpose. Nobody really knows. Everybody's kind of speculating. But the, the fact that the media covered it pretty much all day was just proof of how much Trump's tweets influence news reporting in the media, because the media will have a kind of meeting every day where they talk about the points they're going to have, the talking points, how they're going to spin things, which different stories they're going to cover. And when Trump tweets something, it throws all of that into kind of hysteria because they're forced to cover it. And that's the great thing about Trump's tweeting is he cuts through the bullcrap. He cuts through the middleman and the spin and gets directly to the people. And it's what had got him elected. Trump's tweeting got him elected. And if he hadn't been tweeting, he probably wouldn't be the president of the United States right now because of the way that he was able to communicate directly with people and give his message directly to the people in a very concise manner. So with the fact that it's pretty evident to most people, including the, uh, the, I think the CEO of Twitter even said something along the lines of he feels like he's responsible for Trump being in office. I think it's really important to pay attention to the fact that he's the president of the United States right now. So the burden of proof is on my opponent to prove that Trump's tweets harm him. And so I'd like to know uh, if he's going to argue that Trump's tweets harm him, how they do and, and how he uh, actually kind of judges that and how you measure that. So how do you measure and show to me that Trump's tweets are harming him when they've seemed to do nothing but help him out and get him in office and continue to push back when there are fake news stories or other things going on that he can address to people directly. So I'll pass the mic to my opponent, if it'll let me. It's not let Hey, thank you very much. I would like to thank everyone for watching this debate, and I'd like to thank, be thankful for being the second round of Call Out Tournament. Um, I want to start off with a rebuttal very quickly on some things. Uh, biggest point, he it controls the media. The media is a propaganda machine, the tweet overload, code Fifi, uh, media coverage and influence, no link to good or harm is really what I'm going to drive home as a rebuttal. As of right now, you've made one contention about it getting him elected and a second kind of contention about um, transparency being something that's, that's good for Donald Trump. But both of those contentions will be turned by my case. Resolution analysis, Donald Trump's tweets cause more harm than good to him. Uh, harm to damage or in, injure mentally, uh, good. Benefit or advantage to him. Uh, as the negative, I must only prove that the affirmative resolution is less likely true. The burden of proof is not on me. That's an absurd statement. I am the negative. Uh, first is appeals court used tweets to block Trump's executive order on immigration. The status of the case stated that uh, Donald Trump's tweets stigmatized Muslims. My second, my second contention is tweets are not legal documents. They're statements of policy, and that needs to be vetted by political people, not legal people. Craig Engel, the political law practice of Aaron Fox. This includes tweets of tapes after firing James Comey as president. This is threatening action is being linked to intimidating a witness as a very serious charge. And something is being brought up in, uh, in the committees and, and by uh, Special Investigator Mueller. Uh, third contention, technically the president is exempt from laws of conflict of interest, but as we have seen with the Ivanka and Nordstrom, Trump is stressing testing our democracy based on this assumption. You, as the president of the United States, should not be involved with basic market shares, um, and most people will find that morally repugnant. Those three contentions lead to my fourth contention. Trump's erratic tweets undermine his ability to conduct himself as president proper and working for the betterment of the United States of America. 
This is why you should negate the resolution. Because like I've said, I've already turned his two contentions, right? His transparency is not a good thing. And secondly, uh, the, the, the point of his media coverage influence and, uh, and all that, there's really no link to a good or harm. It's just a statement that he controls the, the media. There's no reason to assume that that's true. Just because they, they act upon something that he does does not mean he controls them. That's an absurd statement. And with that, I'm going to pass the mic for my 10 seconds. All right. Well, thank you very much for your points. Uh, you still didn't address the most important fact, which is the fact that the burden of proof is on you. Like I said, Trump's tweets have obviously benefited him in substantial ways to the point where he's now president of the United States. And as I said, even the CEO or executives of Twitter had said that they felt like they were partially responsible because they gave him a platform. And, and stuff like that. So it's pretty obvious that Trump's tweets do help him. And I've been able to name ways such as winning the presidency. And, and that's a huge, that's a huge achievement. I have not heard any ways that they've been hurting him. You mentioned the Ivanka Nordstrom thing, uh, whereas I think that that was something that maybe he shouldn't have said. And I'm sure there are examples you could provide of me of tweets that he said that may have not helped him in the best way possible, but he hasn't done anything to harm himself that much. In fact, his tweets keep, keep seeming to control the media. And I don't know how you don't either. Maybe it's because you don't accept it or you don't acknowledge it, but it's a fact. Like I said, every time, every time Trump tweets something, the media covers it. And the whole tapes Comey thing uh, about being uh, obstruction of justice or intimidation is absolutely ridiculous and preposterous. It's, it's an exaggeration and an inflated claim based on something that Trump said that is actually vague enough that he could have been talking about Comey recording the things. He said, you better hope there aren't any tapes. Now, he could have been talking about Comey, and that goes into something I'd love to talk about, but I don't have the time to talk about, which is the reason Trump fired James Comey when he was in L.A. is because he couldn't clean out his office. He couldn't erase anything. He couldn't destroy any evidence that he might have had. Because we know that him leaking the memos that he did was, at, at the very least, extremely unethical. And at worst, it's, it's a felony. So won't go into that. But Comey perjured himself by saying that Trump's tweets are the reason that he gave the documents to his friend that's a reporter when it was actually revealed that the tweets came after the report from the memos came out. So... Again, Trump controls the media with his tweeting because when he talks about something, the media essentially shoots themselves in the foot. So uh, Donald Trump's affecting the Supreme Court verdict. The judge's decision in the Ninth Circuit was absolutely insane. It was based on pure moral grandstanding and virtue signaling. He was initiating the same travel ban that Obama had, and they had absolutely no issue with Obama. They will fight for anything against Trump simply because Trump's doing it and they'll justify it by any means possible. That doesn't mean that he was wrong or that he did anything wrong.
thing you were saying. So I feel like we should have to re redo this because I don't think it's fair for me to be able to debate somebody who lost like three minutes of the debate. Um, not sure how we're going to manage this. So um, maybe we can reschedule, but I don't feel like we can continue the debate right now because of what's going on. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to get out of this and try and, I guess, contact Yaz to see what's going on. Unless you want to actually, I'll just let you restate your points and, and real quick, like 30 second rundown. Hey, don't quit the match. Uh, it, it restarted the time anyway. We still have plenty of time. I mean, you've only lost uh, what you still got eight minutes and 21 seconds left of total time. I've got seven minutes and 33 seconds. Um, I really don't need to harp on the same points overall, but I'll go back over my contentions. One, appeals court used the tweets to block Trump's executive order on immigration. Um, they stated that it caused harm to Muslims by stigmatizing them. Um, uh, this includes uh, that his his tweets are uh, a political law practice. It stated that this includes tweets of tapes after firing of James Comey as president. And this is threatening action is being linked to intimidating a witness, which is something that uh, Special Investigator Mueller, Mueller is looking into. Third tension, technically the president is exempt from laws of conflict interest, but as long as we have seen the Ivanka Nordstrom, Trump is stress testing our democracy, which is causing serious problems with him. Uh, those three contentions lead to my fourth contention. Uh, Trump's erratic tweets undermine his ability to conduct himself as president proper and working for the betterment of the United States of America. This is why we should negate the resolution, and this is why you should vote for me as the negative in this case. Because as of right, right now, all four of my contentions have turns on both of his contentions, who only has two, and has grandstanded on some very strange points and talked about some things that had nothing to do with the debate here as of right now. Um, misuse of the burden of proof. The burden of proof is on the affirmative to prove the case. It is on me to prove that the case is less likely or not true. My definition still stand for harm and good. Um, and the, the value system for this debate is still is still up in the air. So I guess I will state that the value system for this debate should be uh, harm versus good and a net negative versus a net positive. And I'm stating it is a net negative for Donald Trump. Okay, thank you very much for that. I only needed about a 30 second rundown on it. Okay, so you're stating about the Supreme Court case against, uh, again, I stated that the Ninth Circuit made a very, very bad decision to state the least. And it wasn't to do with Trump's tweeting. It was to do with their bias. And their bias was very, very clear because Trump wanted to institute the same travel ban that Obama had. The, there, there was almost no difference. It was the same countries. It was pretty much the same exact thing. And yet they had a problem with it because of what Trump had said about Muslims being an issue when it comes to terrorism because the people who commit most of the terroristic crimes in the world are in fact Muslims. So that's a d debate for another time. Um, I don't think that that shows that they harm him because it's somebody else's decision to do that. And like I said, they've tried to do everything they can to hamper any progress he's been making and absolutely give him hell at every single turn. So just because the Supreme Court did something, it's not because of his tweeting. It was actually because of something he said. It wasn't even actually because of the tweet. It was because of something he actually said. But again, my, my point is he's in office and his tweets control the media. And the media seems to do everything they can to spin them in a negative fashion. And it just doesn't work. Because a lot of people see through that bullcrap. And a lot of people, the reason that he got elected was because people would go out to his rallies and hear him actually talk to them. And then when he was tweeting, he was making his points directly to people. Um, as far as the, the other contentions you made, I think that it is really, really important that we have a president that is able to get his message to the people. 
And when his message is so concise and so direct to the point and talks about things that wouldn't be talked about normally as far as, let's say, the WikiLeak releases, that was something that the mainstream media would not have reported on. There's a lot of things that Trump has tweeted that the mainstream media would not have reported on at all or only given it maybe five or ten minutes because of the fact that they want to distract people from major issues. And this is something my liberal friends used to agree with me on. And it's really depressing that we've gotten to the point where people think that mainstream media is the most trusted thing in the world. Whereas Trump and his tweeting really makes him transparent. And people argue that his typos, when he does have typos, is, is showing some kind of um, some kind of inability to actually do things, but everybody makes mistakes and it shows that it's, it's unfiltered, that it's not somebody, some PR team holding his phone and making things like with the Clinton campaign. So I'm sorry if I missed any points. Yes, you missed all four contentions. Um, so um, first off, Comey even used the tweets as a defense. Now, yes, they were in Aaron, but the fact that Comey could still use that as a defense just shows you how erratic and awful his tweets are. Um, secondly, your opinion on the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals does not matter here. I don't care whether you think that that was bad. That's irrelevant to the debate. What we're saying here is the fact remains that this happened directly shows they cause harm. Um, the case documents state that the tweets were the direct reason for the case being uh, uh, put in that manner. Um, you, you say they are trying to get Donald Trump. I, I don't know who they are. I find that odd. Um, plenty of us uh, former Trump fans have, have gone against him. Uh, he's lost conservative values, things of that nature. Uh, you know, it's too easy to play good Trump, bad Trump with Trump. Um, so again, uh, let, let's go back over some other statements. Um, his, his media coverage, and you say that his influence, but his influence is nothing but negative. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't that show that if it's nothing but negative influence, that it's, that it's a harm? I think we can both agree that constant negative influence is a harm. Um, secondly, you state that uh, a lot of these people are still really happy with Trump. Well, that's not exactly true. Trump's uh, approval rating is, is pretty low at this time. It's not the lowest that any president's ever had, but it's, it's definitely low with respect to him winning the presidency and it not being that long into the game. Um, and, and that there's no serious crises at this time for him to have any negative things. So a lot of it, a lot of the polls have stated that some of it's directly linked to his tweeting because there, some of them are just bad. I, and I gave you four solid contentions. I've given you cases. I, I've, I've given you statements from uh, uh, Special Investigator Mueller. I've given you statements from uh, Craig Engel, political law practice of Aaron Fox, the CEO and owner. I've, I've given you statements um, about uh, – the, the laws of conflict, but still with respect to Ivanka and Nordstrom. And I've, I've stated how the appeals court used the tweets to block Trump's executive order. All of this has led to harm to Donald Trump and to Donald Trump as the president of the United States. I, 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 you have not made a single point that, that is substantiated by any fact or any proof. It has been nothing but pure conjecture. Well, it's cute that you say that, but like I said, he's the president of the United States. So again, his tweets got him elected, and that was over a year of him tweeting. So uh, I could go into example after example as far as which tweets and how they affected the campaign. I just gave the Kefefe one because it shows how much he controls the media, that him doing something as simple as a typo can control the entire media, where at the press, at the press briefing with Sean Spicer, a CNN reporter was screaming at him, tell us what Kefefe means, tell us what Kefefe means. It's absolutely insane. So it does show that he has control over the media. Control over the media is a good thing, objectively. If you want to control the narrative, then your best idea is to control the media. Now, he doesn't directly control the media because they attack him nonstop. And I'd like to hear a few news organizations, even Fox News, hated him and trashed him for a very long time. As far as the Comey thing, 
the whole tapes thing, that, that, that cannot be possibly considered as obstruction of justice, as intimidation. That is hyperbolic and that is completely untrue. And there's nothing to substantiate that beyond the fact that there are a lot of people, and I don't know if you acknowledge or understand anything about deep state, but the people who are in deep state don't want to be removed and they don't want somebody like Trump who wants to clean house and essentially say, listen, we're done with leakers. We're done with people who are screwing with our country and screwing with our government and making things difficult. And when Comey lied, when Comey found that Clinton, for instance, had violated the law and that he chose to not only say that he didn't think that she had any intent, he also said that he recommended before uh, Attorney General Loretta Lynch had anything to say about it. He was already saying that they didn't recommend charges, even though that's way out of his league. So the whole Comey thing is just utter bullocks, and it's just com it's a complete non-story. Again, him leaking that and Trump talking about the tapes is what I think. Even if he had tapes, he's the President of the United States. If I spoke to the President of the United States, I would expect any call I have to be reported on and recorded. That's just, that That should be an understanding. Uh, Trump's approval rating is at 50%, according to Rasmussen, which is pretty good considering how much every single media network slams him. And again, his tweets are covered by every network. And so when Trump makes a message, when he says something, they cover it. And they may spin it, but they'll still cover his tweets. And his tweets have gotten him elected as President of the United States, they got people to cover stories that they wouldn't have covered otherwise and talk about events that they wouldn't have talked about otherwise. And I cannot see how that's a bad thing. Okay, so this is my final example. I'm going to go off and talk about those last bits. Um, once again, I would like everyone to understand that most of the arguments here are arguments of ignorance. Um, at no point has he given any factual statement. He said, well, you, if you understood the deep state, if you understood this, it's all pure conjecture. There's no proof behind it. Therefore, it should be dismissed because you cannot understand the veracity of any of the claims, whereas me as the negative have given you statements, core documents, and quotes on top of each other for proof to understand my case. Um, Saying that he controls the media or has influence on the media does not show that there is any good. You do not link that together. There is no link for that. Um, to, the, to the tapes, why does the special counsel ran by Republicans want the tapes if there is no tapes or if that, if that was just a hyperbolic statement? That doesn't make any sense. Obviously, there is something there that the Republican counsel wanted. There's something there that Special Investigator Mueller wants. You can say, well, it's a non-story or anything like that. That does not matter to this debate. The fact is, is that something that Donald Trump has done or tweeted has set him to the pace that he needs to correct himself, and it has caused harm to him and to the United States of America. With that said, I'm going to go back over the resolution analysis. Donald Trump's tweets cause more harm than good to him. Harm to damage or injure, injure him mentally. Good, benefit or advantage to society. As the nag of us, only prove that the affirmative resolution is less likely true. I have done that. Therefore, you should negate this resolution. I have given you four solid contentions. Appeals court used the tweets by Trump's executive order on immigration. The direct quote from the case said that it was used by the, tw the tweets used by him stigmatized Muslims. The second one uh, is uh, the, the, the case of the Comey tapes where he threatened Comey or something seemingly threatening as the president of the United States to the Federal Bureau of Investigation uh, uh, head. Uh, technically, the president is exempt from laws of conflict of interest, but as we have seen with the Vonk and Nordstrom case, Trump stresses test our democracy with those. And all three of those give me my fourth contention. Trump's erratic tweets undermine his ability to conduct himself as president proper and working for the betterment of the United States of America. My case has been solid. My opposition has not been. This is why you should negate the resolution and you should vote for me. I have won this debate hands down, and I would like to thank everybody at callout.com, and I would like to thank my opposition for this time and this debate, and I've had a great day. Uh, and to sum up with my final five seconds, um, I would like to thank everyone um, here with me today. Okay. Well, thank you for that ramble of a speech. I think it's absolutely preposterous for you to claim victory when you haven't demonstrated anything of value. You provided a few isolated incidences where he's harmed 
something where you said, okay, well, the Supreme Court. Again, it's not likely true because you gave me those few isolated exempts. It was the reaction to what he said. And what he said was not was was not an issue. It was the fact that they reacted to it the way they did and they took away from it what they did. Trump was trying to institute the same travel ban that Obama was. You won't address that. All you'll keep saying is this hyperbolic bullcrap about the fact that if Trump says something, it endangers you. You said he harms the United States. You didn't provide any evidence of him harming the United States unless you think that the lack of implementation of the travel ban harms the United States, which would, I guess, go against your statement. Or if you think that maybe it should have been implemented, but because of the way that the Ninth Circuit reacted to it, which, again, is unconstitutional because they weren't using anything from the Constitution to justify what they did. They were just using their emotions, which it sounds like this conversation has been almost all about is your emotions. I could hear more and more about how upset you were getting because it doesn't sound like you're able to actually talk about the topic. It sounds like it upsets you so much that you're incapable of thinking about this objectively. Trump is the president of the United States. You said that he's so erratic, he can't do his job properly. Well, he's done more in his first 100 days than Obama did by a long shot. And he's done things that work for both sides of the aisle. He's introduced term limits, which is something that liberals had been asking for for a very long time. The fact that he's instituted a, if you introduce a new regulation you have to cut to is another huge thing. But as far as the Trump tweet thing, it is what got him elected. It is what lets him bypass the media filter. And again, he is president of the United States. That demonstrates that what he is doing is working. And it seems like the only people who have an issue with Trump tweeting are the people who don't like him. You said you used to be a Trump supporter. I don't think that you sound like you were because you can't understand that objectively his tweets are helping him. That's why he's in the White House. And that's why he's still winning and have a 50%